And so we leave with high hopes, in good spirit, and with deep humility. The Watergate scandal that led to the resignation of U.S. President Richard Nixon in 1974 was one of the epic events in our nation's history. As law clerk to the presiding judge, John Sirica, I had what you could call a ringside seat at the Watergate trials. It was 1972, and in the effort for re-election of President Nixon, a plan was devised by people within his re-election committee to derail the Democrats. This plan involved illegally entering the Democratic National Committee offices at the Watergate complex to plant uh, electronic eavesdropping devices, or electronic bugs as we referred to them. I had no prior knowledge of the Watergate break-in. I neither took part in nor knew about any of the subsequent cover-up activities. Judge John Sirick and I listened to the subpoenaed audio tapes from the White House meetings that uh, demonstrated clearly the complicity of President Nixon in the effort to cover up who was responsible for the break-in at the Watergate. Given the imminent threat of impeachment, uh, Nixon resigned. More than four decades have passed since Watergate, but the lessons learned by Elder Christofferson have left an imprint for life. And before an audience of students, faculty and academics at England's distinguished Oxford University, he shared those insights. It seemed to me there were many points along the way when Nixon with an awakened conscience could have called a halt, saying, this is not right, we will not continue. Let the chips fall where they may. And if he had, he might well have outlived the inevitable criticism that would follow and have finished his term. But he never did say stop. Instead, he got deeper into the cover-up conspiracy himself. The life lesson I took away from this experience was that uh, my hope for avoiding the possibility of a similar catastrophe in my own life lay in never making an exception always and invariably submitting to the dictates of an ethical conscience. Putting one's integrity on hold, even for seemingly small acts in seemingly small matters, places one in danger of eventually losing the benefit and protection of conscience altogether. But a weak conscience and certainly a numbed conscience opens the door for water gates, be they large or small, collective or personal, Disasters that can hurt and destroy both the guilty and the innocent. And may I leave with you one suggestion of something practical that I'm convinced will strengthen your own conscience. That is this, a life devoted to service to others allows conscience to flourish. As Jesus said to his apostles, whosoever shall be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. At the conclusion of Elder Christofferson's remarks, those in attendance felt genuinely inspired by his words. I loved it. I thought it was really interesting that um, he was talking about how religion should have a voice in our ethics and the morality of society. The concept of conscience and the way that it impacts our society um, as a public servant is something that's really close to my heart and it was really neat to hear Elder Christofferson's perspective and experience. I found it particularly inspirational as a Muslim listening uh, to the Elder Christofferson saying that our conscience guides us and the center of it is religion. I think what I will carry forward from this talk is the sense of the importance of moral absolutes, how important those are to form how we think and how we act in the world. It's been a real privilege to discuss time-honored truths here at Oxford, a university that's been renowned and known for pursuit of education and truth for nearly a thousand years. 